<laughs> You're listening to the sound of DJ Nigger Dave. That's me. DJ says it right here. Dave in the mix. Here we go. Hey, y'all. It's the Michael Corey Morning Show. Hey, get it up. Get it up. Ooh, woosa. Hey, y'all. AKA DJ They. Question of the Dave. Check this out. What is it about they that bother you? Remember, you always hear about they. It's always they. You know about, you know, they said and they did. Call your clan. <laughs> Put it in your comments and let us know what you hate about they. Because they, for some reason, is a very powerful group of people. Because they got a lot of power. Hey, Bonnie Chambers. Woo, woo, woo to the woo, woo, woo. Oh, Inglewood getting all creative. What's happening? I am legendary artist. There you go, Mr. Mr. Lanningham. Let me make sure all my people checking in on the south side. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You're not from Inglewood. Well, Inglewood, south side of Chicago. It's the same thing. <laughs> Debbie Howard, checking them in. I'm sorry. Did somebody say Chicago? I'm sorry. I, I thought I heard somebody. Man, turn that shirt down. I thought turn I heard somebody mention Chicago. <laughs> Uh, on that note, let's push a button. Let's go. I'm in. Hey. And he'll get my Thaddeus on. <laughs> well, challenge that. Hey, y'all, the thing that is really hard and really amazing is giving up on being perfect and beginning the work of becoming yourself. Come on, somebody. Good morning. It's Mike Kai. Your morning show. Good morning, family. What can I say? Wait a minute. Let me do it with the real music. And where's my chicken? Good morning, Kai Clay. Good morning, family. What can I say? God woke us up on this beautiful day. He's generous, he's wonderful, he's kind and great. So let's show our father we appreciate it. God's good. God's good. God's good. Ba 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 do ba ba. Good morning, family. What can I say? What can I say? God woke us up on this beautiful it's day. Beautiful day. He's generous, he's wonderful, he's kind and great. It's so, so great. Let's show our father we appreciate. God's good, God's good, God's good. Ba 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 ba. God's good, God's good, ba ba God's good. Ba 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 ba. Good morning, everybody. Woo woo woo. It is Thursday, <laughs> February seventh. Thank you. Did you keep the last <laughs> episode three fifty six? I think. Thank you. I get the numbers all messed up. Hey. I just want to say good morning, everybody, y'all. It's my Kai Morning Show. We're here to do our food, do our thing, to make it swing like a ding, a ling, or a chicken wing. We come to sing and do our thing. It's my Kai Morning Show. And you know just where you had to go. Cause you do it here to start the day. And the rest of the day will be a okay. It's my Kai Morning Show. You know, it's my Kai Morning Show. You know, I'll be having more and more fun. Every day I be just finding a little thing, confusing and bobbling, tipping and toppling, trying to do the thing. But I even came here to tell y'all that I just want you to wake up this morning with an attitude of gratitude, knowing that God is you. And let's get started. Hey, y'all, let me start with my co-host with the very, very most of I got to say, first of all, they killed it yesterday, man. It was just me and my crew. And they, man, they killed it. We didn't need no guests. We ain't need no music. Nothing. And they were off the chain, stayed funny and interesting. And the energy, and oh man, it was just, I, I just want to salute them kids from yesterday. They did a doggone thing. Let's bring them on today and get us to see if they can do it twice in a row. I double D Daryl. No, we actually have guests today. But the first person I got to bring on is the hostess with the mostest. Sweet, fine, smart, and kind. 
Get your hands together for the lovely. Oh, and her mama won hundred dollars yesterday, right here on the Mike Tyson Morning Show. Get your hands together for the Persian Black Queen herself, Miss Ashley Gale. Oh boy! <laughs> What's up, y'all? Good morning. Good morning. Let's get this show started. Good morning. Oh, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. You know, today I actually started going through some of my late husband's belongings and oh. realized that I've got to get rid of some things. Mm. <laughs> just touching it has got me all like, <sighs> so oh. today I'm, just, I'm, I'm it trying to lose it all. It takes you to a, a emotional space, a sad emotional space. Yeah, you know, because some things you start pulling out, they kind of still have his scent on them or memories connected to it. And the Japanese mm. say that if you touch it and it doesn't give you a good uh, feeling that you should let it go. And I'm connecting with the fact that now it, there's a lot of hurt and heartache connected to it. So it's in my space and it's keeping me emotionally down. So it's time to let go. It's time to let time go. Time to let go. You know, and the Japanese are right. I was trying to fix something on the back of my TV. And it just didn't feel good. It just didn't feel good. So I let it go. I just let it go. Um, it's so good to see you this morning. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Well. You know, it, the highlight of the show yesterday was talking to your mother on the phone. Aww. Your mother was so excited and so, I mean, it was just really, really wonderful. So I'm glad you come and bring your whole family. You didn't brought your kids. You didn't brought your mama. Everybody here. It's a family show, y'all. You, you ain't seen nothing. You ain't seen nothing. My family is a hoot. And you know every family got that one person, that cousin, that brother, that somebody. That cray, that cray cray one? Yeah, the one you don't really want out around. Oh, that's me. So you got to put up on it. No, it's DJ Dave. Ladies and gentlemen, all the way. <laughs> From Hollywood, California, get your hands for one of the coolest DJs on this planet, DJ That Nigga Dave. How you doing? Oh, I'm, uh, nothing a million dollars won't fix. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. As soon as that check come in. I... <laughs> Did you go to the parade yesterday? No, 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 no. I didn't even realize it was a parade till it was over, but it was big. But, yeah, but, I, you know. I'm I'm not on this super spreader uh, tour yet. I'm gonna I'm gonna oh, give it a little, little super spreader. Tour. I'm I'm gonna let a couple more sheep die and run off that cliff. Not sheep. <laughs> if you want to get me sick and COVID, you got to break in my house while I'm asleep and spit in my mouth. Okay, oh. that's how that's gonna happen. Well, that's a breakfast treat visual that we all would like to hold on to. Thank you so much. The, the most courageous, the most courageous act is still to think for yourself. That's the most courageous thing you can do. Yeah. Wait a minute. I can't write a script in your mind and then force yourself to follow it. You have to be yourself. Hey, it's the Mike Guy Morning Show. And this will be so much fun and so, so much stuff to do. I have uh, I get back on the plane again today and I'm on my way to Raleigh, North Carolina, for um five shows this weekend. So we got people down there, no cackalacky, have them swing on by there and laugh but with us. You know, we need to fill up the house. Although it's doing pretty good to start. Hey, where you get real music from? What the heck's going on here? What is going down? Yeah, everybody Somebody just starts slowly going like this. Like, yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> Somebody broke into the studio and left the music in there for you. I don't know what's yes, going okay. on. I can play some music, man. It'll shut this thing completely down. And like, we don't want to do that, sir. <laughs> uh, so, so I had a conversation um, with um, Nelly Bebe, who, who's angry with me because I wrote to her, though, I ain't the one that wrote it, but still, we y'all represent me. We wrote to her, knock it off. I wrote it. I wrote okay, it. Okay, knock it off. And so she called me and she said, well, I was just speaking my mind. If I can't speak my mind, why am I coming on the show? I said, because you have to speak your mind without cursing. You can't come in here throwing the F-bombs and stuff. You just well, this, this is what happened. This is what I saw. I saw, um, yeah. it, it was, a, the topic was um, um, uh, domestic violence. Yeah. And she started talking about some things that happened in her life. And then somebody made some comments and she did not like what she, they said. But then I said, well, when you expose yourself and tell the truth about yourself and you yeah, leaving yeah. yourself open for judgment. Mm -hmm. And this is what people do on social media. They mm -hmm. will speak their mind. So she did not like that. And she balled up her fist 
And she was and like, well, we can go in the alley. And I was like, hey, 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 stop it. You know, so <laughs> don't come it on down. this show fighting, y'all. Come on. Like I said, look, it's a this a public forum. So if you can say what you want to say, as long as you don't put no F-bombs in it, as long as you're not cussing, you're welcome to say what you want to say as long as you ain't on here battling as well. We don't. Well, care. Nelly Bebe just be checking them. And sometimes some of y'all need to be checked. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. You got me <laughs> sometimes there. Sometimes folks be checking there. back, and that's where the battle come in. This is show for love. Can we all just have a hug? Can we all just get along? Sometimes you got to bust somebody in their jawline for love, though. Like, hey. Well, I know. And <laughs> hey, Mike, that. I, since, Go ahead. Since, let's just get it all out right now. Let's do when it. When people don't win or something goes wrong in a contest, do not call this African American. I get calls. I get text. It's like, hey, uh, Michael one said, and do, I was like, I ain't, I ain't got nothing to do with the price of tea in Compton. But y'all do know that really Michael got the last say, right? He create the rules. He over with, it. and I done. only can go by my screen. You know, some screens variate. I don't know why. Maybe some people aren't coming in directly in YouTube. Maybe there's another way they're coming in. Mm -hmm. But on my screen, I go, I look at it clearly and then I'll ask you guys. But somebody may have something a little different on their screen. And I don't know because I don't know technical stuff. But one thing is we ain't over here trying to play games with people. So if it look like a person win, we're going to go and give it to them. Oh, and one more thing. I'm going to leave Michael alone. Felicia Michael Michelle alone. is not coming back to the show. I just want y'all to know that. Because people keep popping up. Well, when is Felicia coming? We miss Felicia. Call Felicia. Invite her to your house, okay? She won't be coming back to the show. I mean, if something happened and a guest appearance happened, we are open to that. But she's not coming back. She, this is the core of the show. You're looking at the team right now. This is the team. That's what it is. That, this is what you got. What you see is what you get. So y'all can keep throwing the name up and saying, oh, I wonder what Fifi. Oh, I miss They do the Fifi. same with Chris. They do the same thing with Ebony every once in a while. They, say, they do it with Chris Ebony. and Ebony. Them people have moved on to other things, man. That's all. It's no bad blood against uh, with nobody. We just it, It's just a machine that you keep on moving. And talking about moving, before I bring on our first guest, the comic, I got to do my black history moment. Okay, so First, are you guys watching Euphoria? Nope. Nope. What? This girl named What's it Zendaya. On? What, what format? It was in a Hulu? HBO. What's it on? HBO, HBO and a Zendaya. And Zendaya oh, okay. playing a dope addict. And when I tell you she has found every emotion that a human can find, this child is so brilliant. She is so, 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 so brilliant. And I mean, every episode, it's like you can't leave. You can't go to the bathroom. You you can't breathe because every part of every... And then there's a girl who was a comedian named uh, Nika. Nika, I can't think of Nika's last name. She just was a stand-up comedian who plays her mother. Phenomenal job she's doing. So you got to see this girl. I'm only mentioning her because I think she's... I think some there's some black history with Zendaya, too. There's some show that she did that no one as young as her has ever won an award for. But she just... I'm telling y'all, if y'all don't know who Zendaya is, oh, y'all no, need to get no. out of the mud and catch up. But the historical figure I want to go to is another great black uh, actress. And I don't know if y'all ever saw Guess Who Coming to Dinner or any other number of shows, but I'm talking about none other than Miss Bia Richards. Yeah. Now, uh, I think it's pronounced Bia. I think it's B-E-A. A H B uh, Some people call her B Richards. Her original name, though, was Beulah. So it was a U and an L in between the B E and the A H. So it was Beulah El Elizabeth Richards' son. And then she cut it down to B Richards. But you talk about a classic actress. Now, this was her when she was younger. She often got older roles. And this is her when she was in, um, in, um, Guess, Guess yeah. who's coming to dinner? Yeah. And I just need one moment. And she's also a big civil rights person, you know. Oh, sometimes yeah. it got overshadowed by her acting. Take a moment and check this out, guys. Let's get off screen and watch this. I've been talking to your husband, Mrs. Prentice. He seems pretty much upset by all this. I know. Your wife says you are too, Mr. Drake. Well, not upset exactly. It's a very difficult problem. <laughs> For whom? For you and my husband? 
I think you'll solve your problem, all right? All you have to do is tell them you're against them. That's all. And you'll have no problem. You're not going to tell me that you're happy about this relationship. This is not a night for talking about happiness, Mr. Drayton. This is an unhappy night. You've been talking to Christina. I know how she feels. Can you imagine for one minute that I want to see either one of them hurt? No. No more than my husband does. But hurt, they're going to be. Worse than my husband knows. I think worse than you know too, Mr. Drake. Oh, okay. She, oh, okay. All right. All right. He didn't go as far as I needed him to go with this piece. Uh, but I think uh, Nassim, because he throws the pieces up, he cut it right before her, her pivotal role, her pivotal speech. Her pivotal speech is she goes into it. And I don't know if you guys have seen this movie or not, but guess who's coming to dinner? Sidney Poitier comes to this his, this woman he fall, fell in love with is a wealthy, white, young girl. And he's a, doc, a black doctor. And they got to come and tell her mama. You know, they they, they want to get married, her mother and her father, play by uh, Spencer Tracy and Catherine Hepburn, who aren't racist, but they never imagined in a million years they little white baby girl would be marrying a black guy. So they had to bring the information. In this particular scene, though, <laughs> B. Richards is explaining to the father um, that when men get old, they forget. They forget how it was when it first started, when they first met, you know? And it's such a pivotal role. But I just want to show a piece of her actually work. I got to take y'all off. Y'all been making face and being goofy and shit. Uh, so uh, they, I guess y'all don't realize the people see y'all too. So anyway, that's what my superstar interview is, right? Right there is uh, B. Richards. Please look up. Check out her work. Let me bring the children back on now. Uh, uh oh. She's meditating. Okay, right here. And Who that, Daddy? Who that? That's day. That's day. That's day. That's one. Well, you know that's. Hey, I, 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 I'm sorry, your ass. I mean, your butt's so loud. There's another dollar just when talking to you. Okay. Anyway, hey y'all, let's get to the comedian because uh, we got that's our that's our uh, 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 Black History Month moment is be riches. Please look up her work. Oh my God! If you watch Gone with the Wind, you're going. I mean, if you watch Gone with the Wind. If you, I'm going to have to take myself off if I can't say nothing because I'm about to make all kinds of faces. Oh, yeah. Where you go? Where? Uh, okay. What's in that cup? coming to dinner. That's what that was. Go check out B. Richards. She is a awesome, awesome, or was an awesome actress all the way to our, our final days when she was in a wheelchair with oxygen, she was still acting until her final days. So we still but you know, I got a question for you, Michael. Do okay. you know it's 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 said a lot of times when you mention the uh, older people in black history that mm -hmm. they were civil they were involved with civil rights. They were fighting yeah. in the civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. But isn't that something that was kind of required of them? Is, is there no? You could come up with a big old list of folks who didn't get who didn't, didn't go nowhere near that civil rights who had the power to do it. They had a lot to lose though. That if you do they something all, like that and show yeah, your card, Whitey will be like, uh, they all have a lot you. to lose. Uh, and so a lot of folks weren't taking that chance. They wouldn't. And I say Whitey like respectfully. That. You know, he says <laughs> Whitey respectfully. That's such a respect. He meant Caucasoid. Caucasoid. Okay. Um, <laughs> Hey, can we hit that button? Because, you know, we do have a comic person. We have a comedian. We have a very funny guy on today, and what a treat. Hit the Go and hit that comedy button. He coming in just like the comedians this time. We ain't nobody playing. <laughs> hey, family, it's time for the Michael Callier Comedy Platform. We put on over 300 comedians, and they funny, too. Because you got to be funny here. Oh, you coming here, you going to be funny? <laughs> Whoa! It's going to be a long walk back to the car. Check them out. Everybody, it's time for Michael Kaya. Tommy Corner, Tommy Corner, Papa, 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 Papa
That's that yeah. smoking. God dang. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special keep comedic guest today. He's a regular around here. He's family. He came in last time and wowed us just talking. So we said, let's give him a shot. Put him in the real spot. The hot seat. Ladies and gentlemen, the brother funny. He's a great guy. Get your hands together for Mr. Rogers Smith. Woo! Yeah, yeah, Rogers. Oh, oh. Yum, you wake up. My bad. He started <laughs> going gone with the wind and I fell asleep. That moved on. <laughs> it's so depressing. Oh. More and more slaves. I mean, I'm so look, let's just get it right. But you know, I got a business schedule. You know, and I was up this morning trying to decide what we was gonna talk about this morning, Michael. But you know, I, I don't like to offend people. So I was gonna talk about midgets. But you know, <laughs> So I'm not going to talk about midgets because that joke kept coming up short. And then I was going to talk <laughs> like a mix between Shaquille O'Neal and Cheryl Underwood. But then I realized Leslie is a really nice woman. So I'm not going to talk about her from. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about some real stuff, you know, because you know, I'm always telling real stuff. As you all know, Mike and I are real good friends. Mike is really like a brother to me, and I appreciate him. I love him to death. And, and you know, we travel to different cities together sometime and hang out and do what we do. Mm -hmm. You know, we go out there, we live our best life. But the what's special about this relationship we have is we always want the other to be represented in the best light. Yes, sir. We always have the other's back. We don't let one another fall astray. So a couple of weeks ago, I was with Michael in Ohio. You know, and we check into the hotels. You know, we both have a suite, one across the hall from each other. And we, we do what we do. We, you know, we was looking sharp. We was looking clean. Persian black queen, we were clean. When I tell you we were clean, we was a black man clean. Black man bank account clean as if he just divorced a white woman. Took all his Believe money. It. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, we go, you know, we go have breakfast at a nice restaurant, Cracker Barrel. Yeah. We, leave the Cracker Barrel. we go to the mall. We buy a bunch of stuff. We don't need <laughs> because you know the day takes all day because you know how it is when when when, when you're famous or a celebrity and people always notice you and it slows your day down and mm -hmm. then you start feeling bad. So every time somebody stopping us in the mall, I gotta say, Yeah, I appreciate it, but meet my friend Michael Collier. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is Michael, you know, he's a famous crackhead from Virginia Beach. They love him. <laughs> It's like 2.30, right? So I said, Mike, your first set is at 7.30. Your second set is at 10. We had a long day. We need to go back to our respective suites and get us some rest so we can be sharp for the show. Mike mm -hmm. said, brother, you're right. Let's go back to the hotel. So we're back to the hotel. So like I said, our rooms across the hall from each other. I open my door first. Dave, I look in my room, and there was two of the most beautiful, sexiest women just laid across my bed. Had mm. nothing on but bad intention. You hear me? Nothing. <laughs> Y'all talk about Mike getting old at 65, senior citizen. He don't feel a day over 59. That he can't see no more. He don't remember <laughs> if he's talking about going to win, love and happiness. He keep losing the chicken after he choke it. I get all that. <laughs> Michael can hear very well. <laughs> when the door opened, my, Dave, the woman looked at me and she said, We've been waiting on you. We got something for you. So Mike we immediately turned around. He comes over to my door. He looks in. He looks at me. And I'm looking at them. I'm drooling. So I get ready to go in the room, Dave. You know, I'm going to make it do what it do. Mike, <laughs> him, a true brother, put his hand on my shoulder as if he was holding me back. Look me square in the eyes. He said, Ro. He said, that's not you, brother. He said, you and your wife been married for 30 years. You are not that trifling. You don't get down like that. You are not selfish like that. How would you explain that? I looked him right now as I said, <clears throat> see, that's why I love you, brother. You're always right. You keep me on track. I looked at those two women, Persian Black Queen. I sent one Michael room. I kept one because I'm not selfish. <laughs> <laughs> you get by with one. You can't get by with two. See, oh, my God. You're fantastic. You know I accidentally tripped and fell in. You can do that with one. If you trip and fall, trip and fall back in another, oh. now you goofy. Oh my PDQ, Lord. Y'all don't like no goofy. You better come on with your bad self. That was good. That was so, good. So, oh, you you know travel. He travel. Rogers is travel. But, but, but wait, Mike. 
here's the deal. Okay. Here's the deal. You know, I want to thank you seriously because of this platform. We I met some wonderful people. Um, John, John, my brother from another mother. Mother, I love to hang out with John, John. Mm -hmm. DJ Dave, if somebody asked me a year ago what I didn't need in my life. I'd have told him the one thing I don't need in my life is another, another nigga. nigga. But since I met you, <laughs> bad, bad. <laughs> yeah. queen. let me tell you something. You have the right moniker for you. Persian black queen. You know, Persian is the special part about it because, you know, when you go to the mall and you're trying to find that Persian rug, they're rare, they're unique, they're beautiful, and they're expensive. Expensive. But why it aligns with you is when you find that perfect one, the first thing you want to do is take it home and lay it. But this is a family show. So <laughs> man, man. <laughs> now, I have. Lay it down. Lay it down. Man. <laughs> so, realistically, Michael, I've been up since 5 o'clock. But because of these relationships <laughs> I've formed on this show, Angel Vincent Lake, who will forever be young and lovely. I love you to death. Nelly Bebe's. All four of them because they're four of them. Nelly, I'm <laughs> single. You have to constantly, I'm still not single. You have to constantly repeat that and hopefully all of them. <laughs> now, I wasn't going to come on this morning, Michael, because that, you know, my family's going through a rough spell. I, I, I didn't even call and tell you about this, but the elder in my family passed, my uncle Ezekiel. Oh. My uncle Ezekiel was 103. Oh, and, boy. you know, very oh. proud, strong black man. You know, he, um, his father was a sharecropper and his grandfather was a slave. So my uncle Ezekiel pulled himself up by the bootstraps and established a wonderful life. 140 acres, northern Louisiana, on the other side of Shreveport on the Texas side. Very proud. In all our family gatherings, he would always hold his head up and say, I'm going to be here to make sure this family succeeds. And before his daddy passed, he looked at his dad in the eyes and he said, Pops, I promise you, no other generation of this family will pick cotton for the white man. Now, when I say white man, I don't mean you. I don't mean you, Andrew or Jeff. Y'all good white men. Y'all need to stop winning. Y'all good white men. But said, we pick cotton no more for the white man. Well, about a month ago, Mike, Uncle Ezekiel started having these bad, debilitating, debilitating headaches, like migraines, you know? Mm -hmm. So we take him to the ER. They admit him for observation. Give him a IV, give him a slow drip of Tylenol with coating. So he starts feeling better. So they release him the next day. But then we have a vicious cycle we went through like four times. Every two days, these headaches will flare back up. So we take him back to the doctor. The doctor said, well, you know, family, Ezekiel is 103. It's really not much I can do for him at this stage. I didn't make him comfortable. So they gave him a prescription, Tylenol with codeine, and sent him home. So I took him home, filled his prescription, made sure it's covered. I said, oh, I'm going to come check on you tomorrow. Make sure you take your meds. He said, okay, nephew, love you to death. So the next morning, I called him. I said, oh, how you doing? I said, nephew, my head is really killing me. <clears throat> I don't know if I can make it through this. It's really beating me down. I said, Uncle, are you taking the pills? He said, Nephew, I can't. I'm trying. I can't take the pills. So I said, Uncle, please, if you got to crunch them, take those pills. So went on by my business. I called him the next day and no answer. Didn't think much about it because he's 103. So he don't always know the phone ringing. So I go, mm -hmm. I check on him. I find him in the lazy boy, Mike, lifeless. Right next to the chair, he has an end table. There are the pills on the notepad. And, you know, old granddad, grand, uh, Uncle Ezekiel liked that old granddad, the uh, DJ 100%. Had a little old granddad there. Old granddad. So I'm looking at him, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to tell the family. So I look at the pill bottle. I see the top off, but I realize he never took any of the pills. But he wrote a note. So I read the note, and it, it read, Mike, it, 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 it really broke me apart, man. The note said, family, I love you all. I'm glad that everybody's succeeding. You know, we have set a name for our family and we, that name is continue to rise. He said, I'm a very proud man. I live a good life. Don't worry about me. I'm going on to better days. He said, I've done a lot of things to get ahead. But one thing I never did was compromise my integrity or my word. Mm -hmm. I made a promise to my daddy that no other nigga would pick cotton in this family. So I refused to take the cotton out this damn pill bottle for this white man to get to these people. <laughs> <laughs> oh he thought he was picking the cotton. I found wow. out he, was not he was kind of dumb. He died because he didn't want to pick cotton. That's oh, one wow. dead cotton. Pick. 
That was a long way to get to that, that joke, but that my good, goodness. That was good. Was that was good. Like, and we can end it up. Roger Smith came in here and actually spoke to three minutes and took over. I love it, Roger. That's very excellent. What city are you in today? I'm in Austin, Texas today. I'm about to go to the facility, probably fire about two people. Then I'm going over to North Storm and buy something that I really do not need. <laughs> we really don't um, need. I love it. I really, then I'm going to head back home because I have a doctor's appointment this afternoon. Um, they gave me a prescription. and it, it, The medicine is supposed to last for four hours. And if it don't go down, you got to go back and see the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> this is a family show. You have got to get off my family show. We love you, Ro. Just tell people how they can find you. <laughs> okay. I'm Rogers M. Smith on everything. On everything. everything. Just everything. put Rogers M. Smith. But if you want to find me sooner than later, leave a $50 bill on your pillow tonight and you'll find me in your dreams. Give it up for Rogers. Hey, y'all. That dude is great. He is great, great. I love the we are coming up right next is Miss is Dr. Sabrina Jackson, but I have to drop this promo real quick because we love the black historical colleges and universities around here, and we got two different ones. I'm gonna hit you with this one right. No, let's go this one. Bam. I got a question. Who who is Terrence, and why is he highlighted at the end of this? I swear, God, I was just thinking, who is this little pudgy dude? He looks like he's waiting on a number four bus. What is he? I didn't say nothing because I thought maybe he passed away and he was doing. Yeah, it was like a (laughs) memoriam. It's a little tribute. A tribute. (laughs) The the, the tribute for the dead student. No, no, he. I have. He at the time we posted that. He was coming on the show to talk that day, but I kept it because I like all the other stuff. Because hey, we got to always salute the historical black colleges and universities around Texas here. Southern University. That's where you went. You just Texas saying. Southern? No, that's where he went. That's what he's saying. And which one did you go to? Who I went to Texas Southern Ashley? University in beautiful Third Ward, Houston, Texas. Ashley. I actually didn't finish college. I did some, but I didn't finish. I didn't finish well, either. Me, me neither. <laughs> That we got in time. I did three years at Chicago State University. But best, the best three years of my life. Count, if you count the fact that I was raised in DC and I was always around HU, I got to represent HU. That's you all know. Okay. All right. <laughs> but you don't get no honorary doctor because you do living down the street. Not yet, but if they could give one to Diddy for all his bebopping around town, I'll give <laughs> one later. That's okay. <laughs> we gotta bring on the fabulous. Dr. Sabrina, because you know on Thursday she come and help de-stress the people. And here she is today. You, you know she has a button. You got her, her button set up because you know she mm-hmm. hit her. All right, go on, hit the thing then. We'll do it right.
think that's so cute. <laughs> oh, okay. Hey, Dr. Sabrina is here. We're going to bring her right on. Then I'm going to go off and come back because I'm kind of fuzzy. Yes. Um, but hey, Dr. Sabrina, and I Yay. always saying that you could catch her on Tuesdays on CBS, but no, actually, mm -hmm. you could catch her on Fox television on mm -hmm. Fox. It's not Fox News. It's just Fox, Fox News. Yeah. It's Fox News. It's Fox oh, News with all the racist yes. people yeah. are that same well, see, No, let me say this because people get that mixed up. Fox okay. has two divisions. One is for their local news, which they have seven different news markets across the country. Those aren't the racist ones. Right. The cable side um, yeah, the cable news of Fox is the ones that you know we don't want to be associated with. But I do the local news and I do the other 17 markets across the country. Well, I just want to say congratulations because if anybody else has paid attention to your intro, it shows that you lost some weight. And oh, yeah. You look really fabulous. And nobody Thank has said so anything about that. Thank you know, you so and I'm much. like, let me just take a moment to tell her she looks good, sis. You look good. <laughs> I always say this, that I am 56 now, and I look better at 56 than I did at 46. Boom. And it is my plan to look better at 66 than I do today. What? Come on, Jack! What? Let's do it, Jack! Okay, with this, okay? So, you all were talking about uh, love a little earlier, about affection a little earlier, and I was like, oh my God, they are right up in my talk for today because... This week, at the beginning of the week, was Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. And so my uh, tips for you today, my education for you today, has to do with the benefits of being and showing love and affection. There are physical, scientific, proven benefits when you are affectionate and when you are loving. The first is that it boost your love hormone. And a lot of people don't even know that we have a love hormone, but we do. It's called Oxycontin. It's Oxycontin. called what? Oxycontin. <laughs> That's our love hormone? That's our love hormone, yes. It makes you feel kind of warm and tingly inside and that. You know that feeling when you get, when you absolutely love someone and you just really want to be up next to them. And it doesn't have to be the love that we have just for our love partner. But when you first have children and you are so enamored with the, the hugging the baby, that mm -hmm. is releasing a love hormone. And so wow. when you are affectionate, when you're so showing social support, you are releasing that hormone. The second thing that showing affection does is it reduces your stress hormone. And your stress hormone is cortisone. Cortisone is the stress hormone that is released. And when you are showing affection, when you are showing social support, it reduces that stress hormone. And you want to make sure that that hormone helps to decrease the negativity associated with feeling stress. Because all of us feel stress at any given time. Something could be going on and we feel stress. But what things do we need to do to make sure that we're alleviating that feeling. Number three is it lowers your blood pressure. And you know, in our community, we have an issue with blood pressure on the rise. Well, one of the things that helps to lower our blood pressure. That's them is, ribs. That's, that's them ribs. ribs. That's why we got to have blood pressure. It's eating all that pork. Bleed Especially pork when we get that sauce. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you. But we want to make sure that we do that because when we lower our blood pressure, we also reduce heart disease. And heart disease, for if those don't know, in African-American women is on the rise. It's very high because when African-American women get it, it seems like they don't have the symptoms and it's almost like a silent killer. So we have to be careful, women, about taking care of our blood pressure so that we can reduce the opportunity to get heart disease. We don't want that. We want to stay here as long as we possibly can and be as healthy as we possibly can. Number four, it improves your mood. And when it improves your mood, it's almost like, say you're leaving for work and your spouse gives you a hug or a kiss and you go through that day skipping and you're happy because that affection makes you feel better. Look at who wants to get on camera. Uh, 
it makes you feel better. But not only will it help you feel better for that day, it can last. That affection and that support that you get can help you feel better during a tough week. If there's something going on in your job, it helps to create the environment that keeps your space and your soul in check so that you can do better with the things that's coming at you. And then the last is that it boosts your immune system. And oh my goodness, don't we need to improve our immune system? Our immune system is the ability when we have love, affection, social support. And I keep saying that because sometimes when we talk about love and affection, we're talking about touching, but sometimes just being supported, just getting that telephone call, just getting the, uh, how you doing? Are you feeling okay? I can say for me, when I was sick and I was in the hospital, it made me so excited and happy and made me feel better when people called and checked on me. I will say your leader over here, Michael Collier, would FaceTime me and they would call me and he would do things to make me laugh. That helped me to not stay stuck and it built my immune system. So that's why I'm on the other side of COVID looking as fabulous as I do because woo, I know woo, how woo. important it is to show affection and social support. So those are your five reasons why you want to do those, not just because it's Valentine's Day week, but it is something we need to do all the time so we can be in our best space possible. Ain't yes, love yes, great? Yes. Love, love is amazing. Love that. Love great. So I love good. love. I, I'm a, I love love. I'm a lover mm -hmm. of love. I love it. I love being in love. I do all the action of love. And it really does release things in your body that allows you to fly free. You know what I'm saying? Plus, that word is interchangeable with God. So when you're dealing with love, you're dealing with spirit. You're dealing with everything that's good for your heart. So thank you, mm -hmm. Dr. Sabrina, for laying that out for us. Yeah. Tell us when we can see you. You can find me and Sugar on my <laughs> Sugar just will not stop jumping on me. She's so funny. Has uh, she ever taken a little dump on you while she's on? Um, never. She never. Never cut one. Never. Never. Just, never. never. I can't Beater. hold this no longer, Mama. Y'all gonna do that to black folks. They have never. an inner inner. They have an inner. <laughs> they know that. Oh, you're getting put out if you do that. That's survival mode right there. That's it. That's survival mode. People can find me on my website, sabrinajackson.com, all one word. You can get to all my social media from there. You can book coaching sessions there. You can purchase books there. Anything, Dr. Sabrina, you can find there on my website. And thank you so much for this opportunity, for this platform. Michael, let me tell you, you are changing lives out here because you definitely changed and improved mine. Oh, oh that's so God. sweet. Thank you. Yay, yay, thank yay. You. And all your stuff is up to at IG. It's Dr. Sabrina. Uh, uh, speak, speak, uh, TikTok at the people the expert, expert. Mm -hmm. and www.sabrinajackson.com. Is that the web? Yep, that's the web. That's mm -hmm. the web. And I just want to mention my TikTok since your TikTok is up. Michael Callia 135. Y'all got to go and load up on that so we get a bunch of numbers. I only got two on there, but I'm adding one this week. <laughs> Michael Callia 135. All right, everybody, give up some love for Dr. Sab Wait, we didn't hear her. Woo, woo, woo. Where's the woo to the woo woo? Woo woo woo! Yeah! yeah. yeah. <laughs> right here on the Mike and Kaya Morning Show. Woo woo woo! <laughs> hey, listen, I gotta go to prayer, y'all. And then we have a wonderful poet about to knock us out. Plus, she's gonna do something else special for us because she is from my homeland, uh, Ghana. Come on, y'all. Y'all don't know about no Ghana. It's Black History Month. If you don't learn nothing about yourself the rest of the year, doggone it. Work on this month. Hey, y'all, it's your boy, Michael Kai. It's the Michael Kai Morning Show. Today is February 17th. This is a Thursday. We're approaching the weekend quick, fast, and in a hurry. So I want y'all to be safe out there. Have fun out there. But keep living out there. Keep loving out there. And so we, we always like to start with a holy breath. Inhale. Hold it for one second and think one positive thought. Now exhale slowly. Mm. Don't that put you right in the zone? Father God, yep, we're here again celebrating the fact that you allowed us to be on your uh, wake-up list this morning. Father God, I'm glad to be here. So many people went to sleep last night, had plans for this afternoon, they ain't here no more. So I understand that every breath we take is a blessing and a gift, Father God. I, I personally has, have overcome crack cocaine and COVID, and I'm still here. 
Every breath I take is a gift. You might as well wrap that up with a big old red bonnet. So thank you, Father God, for our lives as we open our hearts, our souls, our minds, our spirits. We invite you to come on in and fill us with your love, your peace, your joy, your wisdom, your sense of kindness, your sense of greatness, your sense of love. Father God, show us how to be more caring of each other more loving, more supportive. And in all of that, let us also learn to love ourselves more, to care more for who we are because you created us. You didn't say, hey, let me take a a, a cup and a chicken and a bell and make some niggas. No, you designed us with designer genes, G-E-N-E-S. We are the best of the best, Father God. All we have to do is learn to love ourselves and then share that with the world. So we thank you for everything, Father God. We ask you if anyone needs a healing or a blessing, would you put your hands on them and go and do that thing. Lift them up and help them get through these crises that we have out here. Help us navigate this thing called life, Father God. I am most thankful just for waking up. I'm thankful for my home, my family, the blessing of this show, to be able to hang out with all kind of eclectic, cool, wonderful, powerful, fantastic people and to exchange ideals in a positive and loving way. So God, I just want to say thank you for everything, for everything, Father God. Thank you for the sense of humor because you know, uh, if you can't laugh about it, you're in trouble. But if you can laugh through a thing, you can get through a drink. Forget about him. Okay. Anyway, with all that said, I just want to say thank you, Father God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, we say amen. 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 Also, I mean, I say, boom, shaka laka. And the famous words of all of those who call ourselves the Kaya clan, woo, woo, woo. Yeah, boy. That's some prayer. I think it made it to the top. Boom mm-hmm. to the boom, boom, boom. Hey. Yeah, you know, put on call. It wasn't call waiting this time. I, I ain't get no calls. We good. You ain't get no calls this time? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I didn't go too long. Okay. Jesus, I, wasn't, I, Jesus wasn't irritated. But uh, yeah. meanwhile, since you talking about your bloodline being uh, taken back to Ghana, I'm going to need you to learn how to make peanut butter stew. Don't okay. Yes, peanut I am. Peanut butter stew. Peanut okay. butter stew. Baby, you can make it with chicken. You can make it with fish. You better know what you know, because if you don't, I was raised in the church. I went to African churches, and I know, I know how to make my African stew. You <laughs> do you know, season you know. that with jelly? Do you season that with jelly? No, sir. No, sir. You don't do that. Don't <laughs> disrespect that dish. Peanut you never stew. had peanut butter stew. Oh mm. my God! Something you don't even crazy. know. Look how beautiful this book is. Oh, look at Black that! History Month. I have to, I have to tell y'all about Glory really quick. I had one. I gave it away last time I was on the show. And I said, I'm getting one for myself. And all it has is beautiful pictures wow. of our children dressed in the most beautiful Africanic styles. And we just, Ooh. oh, my God, we just born beautiful. And I, I can't help it. Look at this. Oh, my God. Look at this. Oh, that's beautiful. So uh, so that book is called Glory, man, by Kahan and Regis Benthacourt. But it is a fabulous book, and I think that we are fabulous people. You want to talk about a fabulous person? Oh my God, a cool your grandma's here, yo! And I am over the over the moon. Just I'm so blown away that she said yes. Uh, please get your hands together for a wonderful poet, spoken word artist, actress, goddess. Connector of spirit, get your hands together for the wonderful, the fabulous Miss Akuyo Graham in the house right now. I got so excited. Hi, Hi, Michael. I have a quick question for Ashley. So, the peanut butter stew, which you're right, is delicious. What about jollof rice? That's the yes, ma'am. Okay, yes, ma'am. Oh, I don't like. I ate so much. I ate so much of that one day. <laughs> there was an African wedding at our church, and I ate so much of it. I ran around, ran around all day, and I ate so much of it. But when I got home, I had to, I threw up because I ate too much. But I was like, oh, oh my God, it's so good. Yeah. <laughs> you said you ran around. I thought it gave you the runs. And you I was, ran I was oh, a but, kid, Michael. <laughs> why do all the African people I talk to talk about jollof rice? They even compare each other's making of it. I know it's it's because it's a very popular dish, mm-hmm. and typically Ghanaians and Nigerians are always fighting about who makes the best one, yeah. you know. And, and then the Senegalese, uh, um, you know, jump in on it as well. It's because it's it's one of the most famous dishes that if you mention jollof rice in most places around the world, a lot of people will will know what you're talking about because well, it's what, so. What? What is it? What makes it so different, Akuyo? I mean, it's just rice. Is it's it rice. rice. You know, you know what it's like. It's like Spanish rice over here. Okay. Yes. So it's, it's made in a sauce. 
Okay. It's mm -hmm. all in the seasoning, mm -hmm. you know? So I, of course, think Ghanaians make the best jollof rice in the world. <laughs> My mom makes really great jollof rice. She's yeah, you got to try that peanut butter stew. He, I can't believe oh. he doesn't have that. Uh, shame on shame on anybody who has not had peanut butter stew. That's right. Right. right? It has it's to be spicy. So if it's not spicy, that's right. Not, you know, do you like it with chicken more or fish? I like it with chicken. Really? Yeah. I like the fish. You like it with Hold fish. on a second. Hey, Angela, this is our this is our in-house uh chef. This is the culinary kisses, Miss Angela Michelle. These ladies on here talking about Jolof rice. You ever heard of that? She said, yes. Yes, 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 yes. She yes. almost went off. She said, yes. <laughs> you, put some, you, put some, you put some emotion in that. So is it, it's good like that? Yes, it's mm -hmm. good like that. Yes. So who makes the best, the Nigerians or the Ghanaians? Oh, I'm going to have to see. The Nigerians. Oh, and we have a Ghanaian on the show, girl. It's too late. Can't take it back now. Wait, one more thing, because this, I, I hate to be doing this on her segment, but we start talking about food. What is this peanut butter soup or stew? Stew. It, it can be both soup and yeah. stew. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She said peanut butter. Do you know how to make that? I do know how to make that. Can you come on next week and make peanut butter stew? Yeah. We're doing peanut butter stew next week in honor Ooh. of a Kuyo Graham being on this show <laughs> and being Ghanaian and I'm being fabulous. Oh, oh my God. I Thank you. Connect. I want to chat and connect. Give her my information. Absolutely. I'm hooking okay. you up with I'm I'm hooking you up with a Kuyo. I, I love, love you. Her. Thank you. you <laughs> All right. Now wait. Now before we go, before we get started, before we go. do anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, because before because she's going to do a poem. But before you do that, would you please do a, the prayer for me of in, in and then translate yeah. it? Of okay. course. All right. Okay. okay. Right. Right. This is My amazing. honor. <clears throat> so how wonderful to just take a moment, a moment to reconnect with the presence, the presence that is never an absence. In gratitude and thanksgiving, we give thanks to God Almighty. So thank you, beloved God. Thank you so much. There's nothing more to say, but thank you for everything has been given. Everything has been done. And thy grace truly is our sufficiency in all things and in all ways. So I bless Michael in this magnificent show. I bless all of his uh, co-stars with him and all the guests giving thanks for this day. We pray this in the name and nature of the Christ. Amen. 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 Ooh, we, I love it, girl. When you be praying in Ghanaian, I be like, what? We need to have a song called Praying in Ghanaian. Praying in Ghanaian. What? That's praying in Ghanaian. I'm praying in Ghanaian. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to now hear. Are you ready to give us, hit us with the poem? Yes, I am. Here she is, Akuyo Graham. I am the African who knows the strength of each tight curl upon her head. I am the ancestors whose tribal conflicts embellished their own enslavement. I am the mother and father who will heal the pain inflicted on their stolen children that sailed away upon the crying waters of the Atlantic. I am the daughter who treasures her mind, respects her body, and encourages the love in sisterhood. I am the brother unafraid to express his sensitive nature, who proudly reclaims an ancient integrity, gracious in his strength, mindful of his human form. I am the sister who will douse the salted wounds of her prince with soft kisses, walk by his side in balance, to make that love which will give birth to whole tribes eager to live humbly in grace. 
when I wake up, when I remember, that is the African I will be. Wow, that was beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Woo! Thank you. Oh, go, Diamond. Go. Go, Mama. Go. Go. Oh, my gosh. She comes in. She got that big old thing on her head. Thank you so much. Yay. Oh, you're welcome. Tell me a little bit about you. What, what all do you do? I know you're a writer. I know you're a, a poet. What else? Actually, right now, I'm so excited, Michael, because my one-woman play, we're finally making the film out of it. You know, during COVID, I wasn't able to um, I wasn't able to travel to perform. And so I was thinking, well, how do we do this? You know, all of us as performers. So I had the vision, I caught a vision to um, film the piece. However, I didn't just want to film me performing on a stage. Mm -hmm. So um, I wanted to add what I consider cinematic values to it. So it's a hybrid of performance art and cinema. And I'm really excited because I have a, a, an amazing crew helping to bring this in, you know, into fruition. Reverend Michael is one of our executive producers and I have an oh, incredible nice. um, DP, Richie Yao, um, Nabure Butali, who's a Kenyan producer, is nice. on board. So we have some incredible artists that are really helping to usher forth this vision. I'm very excited about this, Michael. Have so, you started um, shooting any of it yet? We started shooting October. We're about to launch um, a GoFundMe campaign in the next couple of days to help raise the rest of the money mm -hmm. to you know finish filming. And we intend to finish filming next month, March, April. Well, look, when you finish, will you please bring a little piece of the tape and I can oh, run it yes. and we can promote it and let people know where it is so you can Absolutely. go and do it. And Absolutely. when she speaks of Reverend Michael, she's speaking of our minister, uh, Reverend, uh, the the Reverend, right Reverend Michael Bernard Beckwith of Agape, who is just a beautiful man, a great spiritual leader, a great teller and speaker of the truth and yeah. funny as hell. He could right? do stand up comedy and make a million dollars a year easy. He is right? hilarious. So I thank you so much. Tell people where they can awesome. find you, Akuyo. Wait, wait, one more question before you tell me. Yes. My son asked, about the peanut butter stew. Is it yes. sweet? Is it sweet? Um, not really. If you've ever had a chicken saute, um, it's similar, it's, it's like that, but it's not sweet like chicken saute. So it's not sweet. No, no can, you, it's, can you make it with both smooth and chunky? I mean, no, smooth, smooth. Just yeah, smooth. No. You don't want and to it's eat. best to use natural peanut butter that, so there's no right. sweetener in it. That's exactly. the peanut butter. The I'm not gonna like that. using them so other ones. Mm -hmm. With the sugar, that's right. Thanks, Ashley. You got it. I'm yeah. not gonna like the soup without the sugar, sir, ma'am. Yes, you watch, watch, watch. He like it. Watch. All right, he we like gonna it. check it out. We love yeah. it. Man. Thank you so much, Akuyo. I appreciate you. Uh, Tell people where to find you. Um, www.akuyo.com or spiritawakening.org. That's my foundation. So I love if it. You, if and you spell my name right and you Google me, you'll. I mean, everywhere. <laughs> You're such a beautiful goddess. I appreciate oh, you so much. Will you give your husband my best? I will. And give Kelly my best. I love you so much, Michael Collier. I will. Blessings to you. you. Leave us with a woo, woo, woo. Woo, 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 woo. Hey. Yo, give it up. A cool yo gram, yo. Hey, Michael, go hit us with some traveling music. We can still get out of here on time. I couldn't believe it. You said her name right. I don't know what he was doing. To, he's struggling with that other name. <laughs> Like Mary and Kathy. <laughs> and this was really good today, y'all. It's Thursday. Thank you, Roger Smith. He's always great and funny. He got funnier when he wasn't doing the part, right? Yeah. He started was out with the set, and the set yeah. was good. But but when he that dropped was the hilarious. set and started just going, ah, I took it to the next level. Thank you. Fire. Thank you, uh, Dr. Sabrina Jackson, who's always like, always, always. Woosh. And thank you to wonderful Akuyo Graham. Thank you for coming and representing. Thank you guys. It's a magnificent day. I got to fly out today, so I got to go and pack some things and get ready to go. If you have folks in North Carolina, have them check me out at uh, Charlie Goodnights. 
that is in Raleigh, North Carolina. Five big shows, two Friday, two Saturday, one Sunday. You have five opportunities to miss me. Tell your mama and Pookie and run around. Get off that couch and let's go do something exciting. Let's go see my guy and see what he's wearing today. All right, go ahead, guys. Say goodbye. Hi, see you guys tomorrow. Yeah, y'all play too much in these comments. Y'all gonna have to like fall back. I, again, fall back. Thing, I don't want to get into it, but boy, y'all, you, y'all need to. Uh, 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 we just uh, have to learn. Uh, we have to learn to ignore some people because some folks just gotta say some stuff. Okay, and they, they like to they, argue with each they, other. Somebody need to get laid. They Somebody gotta get, get a J. Well, that's where you. That's where you. That's the truth. That's the truth. But this is how families do. Families mm -hmm. always. It's like you know you got the the barbecue and they come in and you look up. They, they, we talk about this earlier. One thing in the family. There's always that one in the family. And I love the craziest the one of all. So listen, bye, y'all. <laughs> you made your potato salad. That's what I want to know.